Hello, everyone. My name is Marty Guthmiller, CEO at Orange City Area Health System, uh, bringing you today a, a updated COVID-19 community briefing. It's been a while, so I thought I would provide some information that may be helpful to you as you try to cut through all the noise out there. Um, today's briefing might be entitled, um, here we go again, question mark. Um, and so we'll go through some information and, um, and you can answer that question. We'll also answer it for you at the end as well. There is a lot of noise out there currently regarding uh, COVID. Uh, stuff like COVID, is COVID on the rise? Is the vaccine effective? Um, is it effective against the Delta variant? Um, what about breakthrough cases? Uh, a number of questions uh, similar to that. Uh, today's briefing will try to walk through some of that information um, and, and may provide uh, some answers to questions that maybe you haven't thought of as well. First of all, some statistics. Um, haven't been paying a lot of attention to the iowa.gov. or coronavirus.iowa.gov website lately. Um, but I wanted to give you some stats. Um, Iowa 14 day average is 4.6%, seven day 4.2. Uh, Sioux County is a little bit less than that at 2.3% 14 day and seven day at 3.1. Now it's also important to note in the last seven days, the 3.1% was only on two positive cases. Um, so we think there's a little more activity than that but the timing of this reporting and the origin of the patient comes into play with that too. But officially, uh, Sioux County has two positive tests in the last seven days. There also are two long-term care facilities in Sioux County that are curr currently under outbreak status. In region three, which is a reminder of that is the 20 counties in Northwest Iowa, there are 19 folks hospitalized um, in those 20 counties, six of them in the ICU, but none of them on a ventilator. So that's very good news uh, coming out of Region 3. I always want to look at the, the death number as well, because that's a, that's a reminder that this thing is not over. Um, in the last seven days, um, the deaths per day range from 7 to 13. Uh, for an average over the last seven day period of about 10. So uh, still very significant and uh, very concerning. Sioux County, the death count in Sioux County has not changed for a while. We remain at 74 with 71 of those cases of those deaths uh, with COVID as an underlying cause, three of those cases with a contributory uh, nature of the COVID virus. An important thing to mention also regarding deaths is that uh, I heard a statistic recently that uh, I believe that about 90% of the deaths today are in the non-vaccinated group. So again, another uh, advantage of being vaccinated is likely the acuity uh, of, of the COVID is much less, the likelihood of dying much less. But we're going to talk a little bit more about vaccinations in just a little bit. I want to also talk uh, now, though, about uh, some things we've been hearing in the area that you, you might have heard, too, about hospital or health system capacity being stretched. Uh, I was in Des Moines a week or two ago. Uh, there was a, a news article or an, on the news station um, uh, that Blank Children's Hospital was full. Um, well, it, it's not full from COVID. Um, there are RSV and other kinds of things that, that kids are getting that are not COVID related, but kind of maybe a buildup over, over the winter months. Um, but, but that is true. That's out there. Also, uh, I believe there's some ER in Des Moines. It might have been Iowa Methodist. Um, but that was really running at capacity. And they were ask, asking the public to uh, really discern the need for um, ER care and to avoid it if they possibly could. I know there are other uh, places around us that the capacity is being stretched, but the important thing to note in that is that they're not being stretched by COVID, they're being stretched by other things. Um, 
one of our messages along this whole journey, which has been a long time now, has been to keep your engine tuned. Um, this remains critically important. Uh, in addition to the appropriate level of activity, uh, proper nutrition is also very important. This is a great time of the year to take advantage of all that great produce that we have uh, from our gardens or that's available on the farmer's market uh, as just one example. But please, uh, in addition to physical activity, um, uh, keep in mind nutrition also. Another thing to keep in mind in keeping your engine tuned is not to avoid uh, screenings, not to delay your screenings, uh, the colonoscopies, the mammographies, um, all those kinds of things. One of the reasons for the uptick in the hospital utilization is cancer diagnoses being made that have progressed further than they normally would have um, been caught. And so uh, please keep that in mind. In addition, uh, cardiac conditions not being dealt with timely, uh, blood sugars not being maintained, blood pressures not being maintained as, as may have been pre-COVID, um, those all have consequences downstream. And I think we're seeing some of that in, in the hospital capacity being stretched currently. Take care of yourself and, and let us help you uh, whenever we can uh, with that. Let's talk a little bit about vaccinations. Still available, um, still strongly encouraged. Um, in fact, the American Hospital Association has come out now with an official, official position uh, endorsing and recommending uh, immunizations on everybody. They're also strongly recommending that hospitals and health systems uh, mandate that vaccination for employees. Most recently uh, in this area, uh, Sanford announced that they will be mandating uh, vaccine for their employees effective November 1st. Uh, that doesn't affect Orange City. Um, and it is, is not likely that OCHS will adopt that uh, policy at all, um, but that is out there. Um, it's, it's not necessarily the wrong choice. It's a choice right now that we do not believe that we need to make, and we will not be implementing that here at Orange City. We're uh, mandating our employees be vaccinated. The vaccine is still believed to be very effective, uh, not only against COVID, but uh, and not only against the Delta variant, but really with all the variants so far. The key thing is to uh, get COVID knocked out enough uh, that as those variants uh, arise, uh, that they don't get a foothold. And so the vaccine is, is very much uh, considered to be effective and safe. And we do encourage you to get that. Breakthroughs still happen. Um, that you're gonna hear that, or I had COVID before and now I have it again. Uh, or I have vaccine and now I have COVID, it must not work. Well, studies have showed, remember the 90% of the deaths today are in the non-vaccinated group. Um, you may test positive uh, having previously been vaccinated, but the data shows so far that the acuity level of that uh, infection of the virus at that point is much less. Um, so it doesn't require hospitalization, uh, certainly doesn't lead to death nearly as, as uh, frequently. And so there is definite benefit from the vaccine. Also, regarding the Delta variant, a little more specifically, Dr. Laird has recently authored an article that will be published in the uh, Capital Democrat, I believe, next week. Um, it will also be published on our various social media platforms that we have. So, so look for that. And if you want to do a little bit more of a deep dive into the Delta variant, um, look forward to Dr. Laird's article. Also want to talk a little bit about uh, COVID testing. Yes, it's still available in our clinic. Um, we, we do some of it every week, uh, obviously not as much as we had been. The Test Iowa clinic though is closed and so all of our uh, testing is done through our clinic. Just call in and you can make an appointment for that. Also, we've had a lot of requests for uh, travel testing and so testing for the travel uh, is available by, in, in many cases, picking up the at-home test kits. Um, they're free for the taking. Uh, come in either the front door or the ER south entrance. 
Um, those kits are available. There's no charge for those. Um, they are saliva kits. And so you can collect your sample, send it in directly to the state yourself and receive about in about 24 to 72 hours, the results directly from the state. You have to keep in mind a little bit on the weekend um, that, that that 24 to 72 might get stretched a little bit. If those tests are available. Uh, our understanding is most of the time those, those tests are being accepted and you'll wanna do your homework to uh, where you're going, uh, what is being required, uh, but we're being told that those test kits um, are available. So please take advantage of that. So kind of in, in summary, if we believe the answer to the question, here we go again, is not now, um, not yet. Um, is it possible that we go back to mandatory masking? Is it possible that we close down our cafeteria? Um, yes, uh, it is possible. But here we go again, not now, not yet. Um, we continually monitor the situation. We'll continue to do so. We believe that we can adjust very quickly as and if uh, adjustment is needed. Uh, also, we have invested literally millions of dollars uh, into air filtration systems, cleaning systems, various diagnostic and therapeutic equipment. We're ready and are prepared to deal with what our future holds, whether it's a COVID virus or any other kind of virus. Uh, we're much better prepared now uh, than we were a year and a half ago. That's one of, the one of the benefits of COVID is we have better, cleaner air to breathe. Uh, all of those practices are up to date. We're, we're familiar with that. We have a lot of equipment now to help us deal with that and creating a, a good environment for you. General rule of thumb, as it's been all along, use common sense. Uh, you know, if you're sick, don't visit anybody in the hospital. Uh, in fact, probably don't visit anybody. If you're home, uh, stay home. Uh, if you're sick, recover and, and get better. And, uh, you know, if you have to go out or if you have to interact with anybody, uh, definitely wear a mask. Take care of yourself. Let us help you uh, in doing that if we can with the various screenings that are out there. And uh, take care of yourself. One final comment that I'd like to make also on that, that's regarding uh, Prairie Ridge, our nursing home. Uh, they are operating under a different set of rules out there as promulgated by the government. Uh, they're much more stringent than, than uh, ours are here at the health system in, in the hospital and clinics. Thank you in advance for your understanding of that. Um, it's been a long haul for us all, but uh, the longest haul has probably been in our senior care environment in our nursing home. Um, there, they've been warriors out there. They've been going through things, and and by and large, we've had great success. Uh, we need to continue that journey, uh, not not always by our own uh, wishes in terms of the protocols we have to follow, um, but uh, we are following those protocols. We will adjust them as quickly as as allowed to. Uh, but we just wanted to make sure that folks understood that as well. Well, that's it for today. Thank you for. Uh, joining us, and uh, we'll be back in touch um, as things progress. Thanks again.